So on this right-hand rule question handout, I've given you a few questions to try. Right now, uh, the homework is all of them. Every question is fair game. This is going to be due the day of your test along with the review. I'll put an answer key online sometime in the next couple of days. And I'll also write down the answers just as letters, and I'll give you a copy of that. Because normally my answers are also attached so that you don't have the answer, have to go online necessarily. And I don't have that for this. But I will start by saying, were there any of these, because this was part of your homework, that you were trying and you were going, I have no idea what the heck the answer is, or if I'm right, I'll happily talk about this. Number 12, I'd love to do number 12. Okay. What would be the direction on the force of the wire? This is a nice realistic actual, hey, there's the circuit example, which I kind of like, I got to be honest. First thing I'm noticing here, I've got to really analyze this diagram. This looks like the positive right there. So I think the current is going this way. It's going down. I think down below, the current is heading away from me. Is that okay? And I see a great big horseshoe magnet. See it? Which way do magnetic fields always point from what to what? So if I draw magnetic field lines in, they would look like that. So I have a current going this way, magnetic fields off to the right. Now I can use my right hand rule. I would point my thumb in the direction of the current. I would extend my fingers straight like this, and I would move my hands so my fingers were pointing in the direction of the magnetic field, which for me, Sally, requires me to do this. My palm points which way? I think the answer is B. That's absolutely the kind of multiple choice question you'll get on your test. There's going to be probably anywhere from six to eight, maybe even more, right-hand rule questions. One for the current carrying wire right-hand rule, one for the holding the solenoid right-hand rule, and then one for the cross product multiplying two vectors together right-hand motor rule, which is this one here, the toughest one. <clears throat> okay. I also gave you, I'll, I'll do a few more as the days progress, and I will get an answer key for you. I'll try and email it to you. I'm surprised I don't have one. I think I might have deleted it accidentally. I also gave you some questions to try from lesson two. Basically, it was skip four, skip six, but the rest were fair game. This also is totally fundamental to what's going to be on your test, what you need to know. So I'll start out by saying, from your homework here, any of these you would like me to go over? Three, B. Okay, what do they want us to find? Magnetic force on a wire or on a particle? Okay, so it's not Bill that was on a wire, it's QVB. Do I know the magnetic field? 6.4. Do I know the velocity? 6.0. What's the charge on an alpha particle? Nope. Two of those. See it? Has a charge of two protons. So it's going to be 2 times 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. Velocity of 6 times 10 to the 7th. Magnetic field of 6.4. That's it. Okay. I, by the way, um, alpha particles are neat. They're nerdy. If, if, if they give you a, a weird particle question, they will always tell you its charge or its mass or whatever it is that you need to know in order to solve it. You don't need to know what an alpha particle is. But for what it's worth, an alpha particle, what is an alpha particle? Helium minus its electrons. So ionized helium? Can't remember. That's chemistry. I teach physics. Love to. Okay. I like number nine. I like number nine for several reasons. Here is because we're towards the end of the year now. Now it's time to start reviewing everything. And this is going to pull some stuff out of electrostatics. So here's what it says. 
magnetic field of strength, blah, 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 makes electrons deflect into a circular path. So for number nine, I would say, I guess that means that magnetic force equals circular force. Where magnetic force is QVB and circular force is MV squared over R. Nothing really new there. We did that a few times last day, Sally. Oh, and we said, yay, we can cancel out one of the Vs. And they want us to find the mass of the electron. So if I get the M by itself, M is going to be, move the R up, move the B, Q, B, R over V. Nothing new there either. And I would say, uh, ooh, uh, electron, 1.6 times 10 to negative 19. B, uh, Teslas, yay. Uh, R, yay. Uh, ooh. They didn't give me the velocity. You know what this question's really asking me to find? The velocity. So, I mean, the mass is incidental, but really, I'm going to do most of my work in finding the velocity. Now we're going to have to fall back to electrostatics. In electrostatics, we said, if you were sending charges through parallel plate voltage, we said the potential energy contained by the charge when they were in the plate became kinetic. And now you'll remember this next equation. We said this, Sally. The potential energy between plates was Q, V, and this is where I had to put the wings on my voltage. Remember this one from a couple of units ago? And I say, ah, if I want to find the velocity, the velocity is going to be 2QV divided by the mass square root. Let's see. The accelerating voltage used to get electrons up to a maximum speed was 200 volts. Okay, let's get the letter uh, Well, the problem is if I get the V by itself, I'm going to have an M in my equation. Now, I don't know M. So I'm going to get really, really clever. I'm going to get the M by itself over here. So I'm going to times by 2 and divide by V squared. Is that okay? M equals 2Q voltage V divided by, and I'm going to scroll up so you can see, Sally, V squared. Now, how does that help me? You know what? I take this back. Number nine, I don't quite like this question. This is a bit of a higher level. I would feel okay with this being like the nasty multiple choice. I'm not giving this to you as a written. What does this equal? Say the word letter M. What does this equal? Say the letter M. Then can I not reasonably say Q B R over V equals 2 Q voltage over V squared? They equal each other. And Sally, I noticed, lo and behold, my charge cancels, which is kind of cool. And one of my velocity cancels, which is kind of cool. And I think now I can find the velocity. Which, as I said, was this question really is want me to find the velocity. The velocity is going to be V equals 2 voltage over burr. Do I know the voltage? Yep, 200. Do I know the magnetic field? Oops, I've scrolled down. I still have to. 4.34 uh, times 10 to negative 3. Do I know the radius? 1.1 times 10 to negative 2. And once I had the velocity, I could plug it in there and then solve for the mass. Okay? Now, here's what I do like about this question, Dylan. I think it is fair game. It is totally fair game for me to give you the voltage make you find the velocity, go over here. But instead of asking you to find the mass, Sally, maybe asking you to find the radius, giving you the mass, which is which you needed on both sides. That would be fair game. Is that OK? And that hopefully will work, I think. And that's one way you could calculate the mass of an electron, by the way. The original one was done through uh, charged oil droplets, I believe. Suspending. No, that was how they found the charge on an electron. This may be how they found the mass of an electron.
Certainly they didn't put it on a scale. Any others? So all today is going to be is neat, cool, nerdy, zany applications. So today, Dylan, we want to look at some nerdily cool applications of this right hand rule combined with solenoids and magnetic fields. What can you do? One of the first applications is called the current balance. This is a very, very fine and accurate scale that can measure very, very small masses. So figure 7.2 shows the essential components of a current balance. You have some kind of voltage source, battery, plug, some kind of variable resistor. Really, here's what you need to know. So this is the circuit diagram, and then I'll show you a better picture of one on the next page. But a plastic teeter-totter right here is carefully balanced at the opening at one end of the solenoid. Uh, a current is passed through this conducting strip. I'm going to mark up my diagram. You guys don't need to. But this strip here is a conducting strip. Inside this solenoid, which way is the magnetic field going? Well, let's see if we can figure it out. In this solenoid, the current is going, uh, this is positive right here. So the current is going this way. Oh, the current is going downwards over the top, Ryan. So imagine holding the solenoid right now, all of you, curling your fingers so that the current is going downwards over the top. All of you, right hand rule, right now, put your pens down. Look at your solenoid in front of you. Imagine holding your fingers. I, I have to hold my hand this way, yes? Can't hold it this way, curling over the top. Which is the north pole inside this magnet? Right here. Which is the south pole inside this solenoid? Right here. Which way is the magnetic field? The magnetic field runs this way. The magnetic field runs that way. Okay? It's much easier if we look at the simplified top view. So let's look at this diagram here. Justin, in this diagram, first of all, let's look at the solenoid. The solenoid, the battery has a current going this way, going this way. <clears throat> so as I follow this through, it looks like the current in the solenoid is going, I think, this way. Draw some arrows like that on your solenoid. How do I know it's going that way? Well, because the current comes underneath this way back to the battery. So it must be going over the top away from me, Tyler, and underneath towards me. Is that okay? Now let's use our right-hand rule for this diagram. Hold the solenoid in your hand. Pretend to. Right-hand rule. It means get your right hand up. Curling your fingers in the direction of the current. Which is the north side, Kieran? The left side or the right side? Yep. This is going to be the North Pole over here. This is going to be the South Pole. Which way do magnetic field lines point from what to what? So inside here, the magnetic field is going to be going this way. Now, this little rectangle here is a little teeter-totter. But half of the teeter-totter has a piece of wire on it, like that. And what's going to happen is we're going to send current. We're going to send current through that wire, going this way, going this way, going this way, going this way, going this way. That's coming from this battery here, or plug. <coughs> Regan... This stretch of arm right here is parallel to the magnetic field. And since it's parallel to the magnetic field, there won't be a force, no right-hand rule, because remember we said the force on a wire or a charge had to be perpendicular. The velocity or the direction or the current had to be perpendicular to the magnetic field. 
and Regan, same with right here. This here is parallel to the magnetic field. But this little tiny stretch right here is Megan exactly 90 degrees to the magnetic field. Which way will this little stretch of wire feel a force? Point your thumbs up. Which way is the magnetic field inside the solenoid? Pointing to the... <coughs> so, point your, extend your fingers to the right. Which way is your palm pointing? Into the page. Here there is a mass that's pulling this end down. Here there is a force pushing this end into the page. And basically what you have is a balance where this end is inside the solenoid. You hang a mass on this end. It wants to go down. But by increasing the current, which increases the magnetic field, you can gradually get this exactly in balance. And then by looking at the current on your battery, and knowing what type of a solenoid you have, you can work out how much force is here, and you now know mg over here indirectly. And you can solve for m. Because okay? we did say last day, Tyler, that I could adjust a solenoid's magnetic field very specifically. It was uh, mu naught n over i times L. Well, n's not going to change, L's not going to change. Ah, but i, the current, is going to change. And that I can completely control with a little dial. I can do a very, very accurate balancing scale. A very accurate balancing scale. Another view of the current balance. Here's a three-dimensional view to help you visualize it. So here, this mass will be pulling it down, Justin. But I think if I walk through this solenoid, the force on this wire would also be down. So you can get balance. Your pivot, your teeter-totter right there. Put a bigger mass on. Simply increase the current here until you get to the balance. And then to figure out the mass, you would say, well, Fg equals Fb. Mg equals Bill. The mass of this very light object would be the magnetic field times the current times the length divided by G. Which length? This length of wire here. Now I notice they used a capital L, so I'm going to actually change this to a capital L. Which magnetic field, Jordan? The magnetic field from the solenoid, where the magnetic field is from yesterday, mu naught n i over L. Where, do you remember from yesterday, what did the capital N stand for as a variable? Number of turns. I was, now, this is going to be I in the solenoid. I'll put a little subscripted S there. And this is going to be L, the length of the solenoid. This is going to be L. But all of these are things we have control over. A current balance. Simple device. I don't think we have one here at the school. I looked. I used to have just the balance part, but when I moved classrooms, I lost the teeter-totter part. Can't find it. A, a better application, a better application is the cathode ray tube televisions. Two units ago, when we looked at the cathode ray tube, the CRT, I told you that we use parallel plates to deflect electrons. We actually don't. What we use is two big solenoids. Here's our diagram. Okay. Here's my handy-dandy three-dimensional diagram. <coughs> so we have electrons coming out of the page towards us. We're going to use our right-hand rule here, but our right-hand rule does not work for electrons. What does our right-hand rule work for, Stephen? Say protons. Protons. Caught you napping there. So electron coming towards me like that is the same as a proton going away from me like this. I would point my thumb in that direction. 
Now, this solenoid right here can generate two types of magnetic field. It can put a north pole here and a south pole there. Or it could put a south pole there and a north pole there. It depends, Ryan, on which way the current flows. And that's why I've got the current flowing in both directions. But here's my point. Which way do magnetic fields flow from? North to south. I'm going to tell you that the magnetic field from this guy right here is either straight down or straight up, depending on whether there's a north pole or a south pole there. It's one or the other. That's going to deflect this electron. Which way? Let's find out. Point your thumbs into the page in the direction that a proton would be going. And let's pretend, Connor, that the magnetic field is straight up. So point your fingers straight up. Which way will this electron get deflected? To the... To the right. Or what if the magnetic field was down? It could also get deflected, awkward bend, but it could also get deflected to the left. This vertical solenoid here, solenoid M, can deflect the electron left, right. Now, this solenoid right here, this horizontal one, it can either have a north pole going this way or it can have a magnetic field going that way, depending on which way the current goes. And I don't know which way the current is going. Sally, here is my point. This one, solenoid N, let's point our thumbs up the page again. Point your thumbs up the page. Extend your fingers to the left. Which way will this electron get deflected? Up. Or, if the magnetic field was to the right, which way would it get deflected? <coughs> That's really how a cathode ray tube works. They don't use parallel plates. They use solenoids with magnetic fields because we can control that magnetic field so accurately just by changing the current. And by changing the current, stronger magnetic field, bigger deflection. Weaker magnetic field, not as big a deflection. It says, show magnetic deflection. I already showed you the video of the magnet deflecting the TV screen, right? So, what kind of multiple choice, usually multiple choice questions, will they ask you about this cathode ray tube? says, an undeflected electron beam strikes the center of a cathode ray tube. So initially, we're hitting dead center. Initially, we're hitting right there. A solenoid is placed right there, and it causes the electron beam to strike at position x. So right now, when we turn this thing on, Dylan, the electron is getting deflected downwards. Is that OK? What changes to the magnitude and the direction of the current in the solenoid would cause the electron to strike at y? Well, first of all, let's look at the direction. Instead of getting deflected downwards, how is this electron getting deflected? Up. How could you do that? What would change that here? Reversing the magnetic field. How could you reverse the magnetic field? Flip the current, right? Instead of this way, this way. So I'm going to say no, yes, no, yes. <clears throat> Jordan, is that okay? Now, Jordan, is this thing deflected more or deflected less than it was in X? In terms of the distance, when it got deflected to Y, was it deflected further than when it got deflected to X? Yes, definitely, right? Almost twice as far? What could do that? A stronger magnetic field. And I said that the magnetic field, we said last day, the magnetic field in a solenoid was equal to that. It's the same solenoid, so the number of changes, so the number of coils didn't change, and the length didn't change. How could you make a stronger magnetic field, Ryan? Increase the current. 
increase, increase, no, no. What's the correct answer here? B. Example two. <coughs> With the electromagnet turned off, electrons in a cathode ray tube strike the center of the screen as shown. So with this turned off, with this solenoid turned off, they hit dead center. Now we're going to turn this solenoid on. You know what? I need to zoom into this diagram a little bit, so I will. What I need to do is figure out which way this electron will get deflected. By the way, the electron is coming towards me. I can't point my thumb towards me. An electron coming out of the page towards me is the same as a proton doing what, Evan? Heading away. So I'm, I'm going to point my thumb kind of into the page at an angle. I'll do that in a second. I need to figure out the magnetic field from here. This is positive right here. So, Megan, we're going to draw little arrows like this. It looks like the positive is going over the top if I zoom in on this diagram. Is it not? So hold your hand vertically as though you're holding the solenoid so that your fingers curl over the top towards the right. Do that. It means all of you need to have, yeah, get your hands, right? Which way is your thumb pointing, Tyler? Which way is your thumb pointing? That's the north pole. This is the South Pole. So the magnetic field would look like this. From north, to south. Right here, which way is the magnetic field pointing? Up. That, that's what we needed to get. We needed to look at this solenoid and analyze it so that we could figure out what kind of magnetic field the electron was hitting. So you ready? Electron coming out of the page is the same as a proton going which way? Point your thumbs into the page. Right thumbs. Which way is the magnetic field right there? Up. So up the page. So point your fingers up the page. What direction will this electron get deflected to? One, two, three, or four? Now I got to pause. I'm seeing about five people doing this. You're killing yourselves if you're not trying this. If your right hand is not participating with me, what you're really saying is, I'm going to get 40% of the test wrong. And I guess that's your decision, but it's silly. Yes, I'm looking at the back row there. Uh-huh. Okay, scratch the head. We're good. Here we go. Ready? Point your thumb in the direction of a proton. So, Jordan, it would be this way. Point your fingers in the direction of the magnetic field right there. Right there, the magnetic field is, Tyler? What direction, what location will this electron get deflected to? One, two, three, or four? Four. The cathode ray tube revisited. And then, <coughs> by the way, if you haven't looked at that right hand rule sheet, you're killing yourself right now. Like, it, I've given it to you for a week. You need to have gone through some of it. I'll get an answer key for you shortly. For some reason, I did this as a separate handout. Here's the last and neatest application. The electric motor. All of you have devices that have little electric motors in them. So figure seven point, well here, this diagram shows an electric motor. You ready? Because we're going to be using the right hand rule here like crazy. Here is how an electric motor works. Right now, we have a battery right there. Which way is the current leaving this battery? To the left or to the right? To the left. So all of us, put a little arrow right there, please. All of you. And there's already an arrow pointing up. Put a little arrow right there. In this, now, here's some terminology. Justin, every single electric motor has a magnet in it, and it has a rotating arm, a coil of wires. Now, that coil of wires is called the armature. 
And what we do is we, now this is a very, very simple armature. It's only one wire. Normally it's hundreds of wires all wrapped together. We're not going to deal with that just yet. We're looking at a simplest case. So one wire, the current is going to flow up, up, up. And on the left side, the current is pointing up. See it? Which way is the magnetic field? To the? Right, because magnetic fields always point from what to what? North to south. Now, this section of arm is perpendicular to the magnetic field. That means it's going to experience a force because you have a current running perpendicular to the magnetic field. Which way is the current going? Up the page. Point your thumbs up the page. Which way is the magnetic field? To the right. Point your fingers to the right. Which way is your palm pointing? Down into the page. If you looked at an end view, this arm right here, which has the current moving away from me, is going to get forced down. Oh, not only that, as the current comes through the armature, as it comes down this arm length, this arm here is going to have a current flowing down the page. So now, point your thumbs down the page. Magnetic field still pointing to the right, I'm bending my hand. But on the right hand side, Megan, my palm is pointing. And you know what that's going to do? It's going to make this thing spin. That's how your toy cars work. The wheels spinning, the electric motor, it spins. That's how an electric motor works. So let's read through this. The coil in a motor is called the armature. That's a word you need to know, so let's underline it. Of course, a real motor has many, many turns of wire. <coughs> Sally, some electric motors will just have a permanent magnet. Some will have an electromagnet right there. So the external or field magnet may be an electromagnet rather than a permanent magnet. Most of them, though, are just a little permanent magnet. The external magnetic field exerts a torque on the armature, causing it to turn. Because there's a force down right there, a force up right there, and so it's going to spin. Now, there'd be a bit of a problem here if we had direct current. If we were running from direct current, as soon as this arm got to this side, it would come to a grinding halt. Just get it because I really need your attention for this. Thank you. And you can put the Blackberry away so it's not a temptation at all. Thank you. Megan, if this was a direct current, when this arm flipped over, now I would have current going down the page over here, and it would suddenly come to a grinding halt because it would be being forced up over here. You would have it go like this and just stop. So what we need is a way to turn direct current into alternating current. So it says, and this is going to seem a little weird, relax, it's going to become clear. It says, note the importance of the split ring commutator. Huh? When the armature makes a half turn, the split ring commutator makes the current in two halves of the coil change direction so that the current is always flowing upwards on this side, always, and always flowing downwards on this side, so that we always have a downwards force on this side, and that we always have an upwards force on that side. It says, figure 7.29 shows the construction of a typical laboratory demonstration motor called the St. Louis motor. Oh, for a nice animation, see, let's see if I can find this animation here. Let's pause my recording. Here is a nice diagram of an electric motor. So I'm going to go right here and I'm going to go pause. Okay. Right now, the current is flowing. Uh, this is the positive. On the top arm, the current is flowing. Can you see to the right? So point your thumbs to the right. 
using my screen as your piece of paper. The magnetic field is downwards, so extend your fingers downwards. And yeah, you're going to have to bend kind of funny, but I think you're getting that the force on this is, uh, let's see, to the right, downwards. The force is in the direction of the arrow up there. Okay? And in the bottom arm, we have the current coming, boom, boom, boom. In the bottom arm, the current is coming to the left. If you point your thumb to the left, fingers down the page, at the bottom, it's getting forced towards you. This is going to rotate in this direction. Okay? The problem is... Pause. If I didn't have a gap right there, if this was continuous, then when this arm got to the bottom, the current would be going to the right and it would come to a stop because then you would have it suddenly being forced in the wrong direction. So we have what we call the split ring commutator. It's like a hamburger patty cut out of this circle. And what happens is... Can you see the current is changing direction in the arm if you watch very, very closely? So that the top, the current is always going to the right, and in the bottom, the current is always going to the left. And then for a split second, Tyler, right now, there's no current, but the momentum of it is continuing it enough so that it can continue and connect the circuit again. This is an electric motor. Speed it up a little bit. If I want to change direction, all I do is I reverse the current. Boom. Or I could reverse the magnetic field. <coughs> the electric motor. Now, I'm going to see if I can download this. So that is right click, save link as. Will it work? No, nope, Chrome document. Let me know how you can download a Java app from the web page. I'll ask later. So, back to our notes. Okay. Have I got a good, I think I do. Bear with me for a moment. Physics, electricity, generator. We don't have an electric motor on here? I thought we did. I guess we don't. Holy smokes. So, here's a side view again. And one way you can make this motor go faster is to make your armature a coil of wires. That's what this diagram has. The field magnet from here and here could be an electromagnet. You send a current going through the armature, and you'll get it to rotate. Now, right now, the current is, uh, the, the black part here is on the left. Here it's on the right. It allows you from a direct current source to get an alternating current. Or you can just plug it in, Megan, to an alternating current source. But you can't just run it off a direct current without that split ring commutator. I'm sensing some of you are kind of going, huh? And I don't know if I've done a great job of explaining this. I, I will recover, but let's keep reading here. I'll find a better app for you guys for next class. The split metal cylinder in the armature is called this, is in the split ring commutator. Current direction is from the brush at A to the left half of the commutator, then to the coil of wire on the armature. Current direction is such that the left end of the armature is a north pole, and the right end is a south pole. Current leaves the right side at B and returns to the battery. 
I'll let you read the explanation, just a few notes. Electric motors come in all sizes. Some are very tiny and drive toys. Others are huge and drive trains or buses. But this is how every single electric motor works. You will find electric motors in toy trains, automobiles, cloaks, wheelchairs, streetcars, can openers, cement mixers, furnace fans, robots, and, well, pretty much anything that has something that rotates, which is lots of things. Okay? The motors described operate only on direct current. Alternating current works essentially on the same principle, but you don't need a split ring commutator because you don't need to flip the current back and forth. The current is already alternating. <coughs> Brushless motors? Yeah. They're, they're, I'm simplifying it. Yeah. And I'm starting with a, the, ba the basic concept of an electric motor. And, and so Evan said they're called brushless motors. As a, as a matter of fact, the diagram that I gave you like this with a single flat arm, most tiny electric motors actually have a three-part triangular arm, and that way you can never stop and be in a stalled situation where, by a fluke, you stop where there's no magnetic field and no force. Yeah, it is more complicated than that. But the basic concept is what I'm trying to get across. What's your homework? Done. Work on the review.